Let P be a linear transformation from Fn to Fn. We say that P is a projection if P composed with P is equal to P. Uh, so think about for a moment what that means. If we were to apply the transformation twice, it's as if nothing happened the second time. It doesn't mean that nothing happens whatsoever. Uh, what we're just saying is that the second iteration doesn't do anything. Uh, or one other way of saying it is that if you are in the image of the linear transformation, you are fixed. So the image, the image or the range of the linear transformation is fixed. It's unmoved by this transformation. This is what we'll call a projection. Now, as if, this is, if a projection is in fact a linear transformation, it should be represented by a matrix. So what's the consequence to the matrix right here? If A is the standard matrix of our projection P, then what we can say is the following. If P composed with P is equal to P, that would mean that A times A, uh, if we multiply these two matrices together here, and I don't mean the dot product there, I just mean A times A as matrix, then this should equal A, or in other words, A squared is equal to A. Now, if a matrix has this property of A squared is equal to A, we call this an idempotent matrix. Uh, this is basically a Latin phrase that's saying that the power is itself. Uh, so when you take a power of A, you get back the original matrix A. And so every idempotent matrix is going to be the standard matrix representation of a projection map, and every projection is represented by an idempotent matrix. And so like I mentioned earlier, if you take a vector inside of the domain, x sits inside of fn, let y be the image of x with respect to this projection map p. So then when you look at p of y, well, p of y is the same thing as pp of x, right? Because uh, we're just going to replace y with p of x like we have above here. But if you have pp of x, that actually means you're applying the transformation twice. And since it's an idempotent, uh, you, if it's a projection, you get back p of x, which is equal to y. And so this is what I was saying earlier, that a projection map is exactly those linear transformations for which the image is fixed. It doesn't move. Um, and so this means that while some of the coordinates of x are unaltered, the other coordinates are forgotten. And that's why we think of it like a projection map, that in the right coordinate system, uh, we're going to forget some of the coordinates, but we might keep some of them. Well, I'll give you some more examples of that in just a second. Uh, I want you to think of the following geometric picture here of, of a projection. A projection map, uh, a, a projection I should say, is a map from some, some vector space, some ambient sp space, but it projects onto some subspace, which is going to be the range of this projection. Uh, you could say it's the column space of the matrix representation. And so you see this one-dimensional picture right here that let's say we're going to project onto the x-axis. Well, if you just take a, a typical vector in the space right here, so like here's some vector v, the projection onto the x-axis here essentially is we're looking at the shadow that the vector cast when we, when we have the sun, so to speak, shining, shining on our vector. It casts a shadow on the projection or on the space there. And so the projection is just going to be a shadow of the vector in that subspace. That's what a projection map is all about. Let me give you some examples of such things. So the following three matrices, I want you to try to convince yourself are actually eigenpotent matrices. It's not too hard to see. Like if you take the first one right here, if I take one zero 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 squared, because this is a uh, this is a diagonal matrix, right? Everything off the diagonal is zero right here. Since it's a diagonal matrix, this will look like one squared zero 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 squared, um, for which is just one zero zero zero. This is an example of an eigenpotent matrix. This matrix right here coincides with projection. This is projection onto the x-axis. This was the illustration we saw on the previous slide. Because think about what this matrix would do, one, zero, zero, zero. If I multiply this by a generic vector x, y, what this is going to give you is it's going to give you x, zero, um, for which the y coordinate is zero. That, that, that's the x-axis. We just forgot the y coordinate as we projected onto the x-axis in R2. Okay, look at the next, the next uh, matrix in play right here. If we take this matrix as three by three matrix, likewise, this is a diagonal matrix. You can see that right here. 
And so as such, if you were to square this thing, what you end up is just squaring the diagonals. So zero squared is zero, one squared is one. The only two idempotent numbers in a field will be zero and one. But for matrices, there can be lots of idempotent matrices. Uh, so this matrix is idempotent. And if you take this matrix, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, what is it doing? Like if you multiply by the vector x, y, z, you're just going to end up with the vector 0, y, 0. You forget the x coordinate, you forget the y coordinate, you're left with just y, right? It just has a y right there. And so this, you can, this matrix you can visualize as projection. This is projection onto the y-axis. Of course, when we see this inside of R3, uh, the previous example will be projection in R2. Um, and then when you look at the next one right here, what's happening for this picture? Well, again, this is an idempotent matrix. It is diagonal. So when you square it, you only have to square the diagonal entries because it's a diagonal matrix. And again, as all the diagonal entries are just idempotent, uh, you're going to get 1, 1, and 0. So that's one way of building an idempotent matrix. If you have a diagonal matrix with any combinations of zeros and ones along the diagonals, that gives you an idempotent matrix. And this matrix right here, if you multiply it by x, y, z, it's going to forget the z coordinate. And so this will coincide with projection, projection onto the x, y plane. Again, visualizing this in R3. And so this is the geometric interpretation I want you to have for projection maps. If we have an idempotent matrix, multiplication by that idempotent matrix is going to project us onto some subspace. Some information about the coordinates is lost as we move on to that subspace. Now, if we use the canonical basis of x, y, and z for, for R3, we can see these projections where we forget the z coordinate or we forget the x and z coordinate or, or something like that. But those are not the only types of idempotent matrices we get, get there. Um, notice here are two examples of non-diagonal idempotent matrices. These ones might be a little bit hard to convince yourself on, but it shouldn't be too hard to do. Uh, notice when you square this matrix, you take the first row times the first column, um, you're going to end up with four right there. So you get two times two, and then you're going to have minus two right there. Then if you take the first row times the second column, well, since the since the columns and rows are, are the two columns are identical, this gives you the exact same product, four minus two. Now, if you take the second col the second row times the first column, uh, you're going to get a negative two, right? And then you're also going to get uh, let's see that again. What are we doing? We're doing negative negative one like here, and then you're going to get a plus one. Kind of forgot what I was doing there. And then when you do the second row, second column, you get the exact same combination there, two plus one. And so when you simplify this thing, you end up with a two, a two, a negative one, a negative one. So this is an example of an idempotent matrix. But what type of projection is associated here? So the thing about idempotent matrices is that if a matrix A is idempotent, then multiplication by A will be projection onto the column space. So if you want to know what type of projection is going on here, this is going to be projection onto uh, projection onto the space. We're going to take the span, but what's the span? Well, with this matrix here, notice that the two columns are identical. So really, when it turns in terms of our column space, we don't need the second vector because it's just a repeat of the first one. Um, so this is going to be the span of the vector 2, negative 1, which this, of course, is just the line. This is just the line y equals negative 1 half x. So we can project onto a diagonal line as well. It doesn't have to be the x-axis or the y-axis. Um, what about this matrix right here? Right? I ran out of space, so let me bring it down a little bit. If we take our matrix, again, just copying it down. Uh, well, what was it? It was negative 8, 4, 1, negative 18, 9, 2, 0, 0, 1, like so. What would happen this time if we square it? Could we convince ourselves of this calculation here? Uh, let's do it, right? We're brave. We can handle such things. Uh, so as we do the multiplication here, what's going to happen? You're going to take the first row times the second, uh, the first column right there. 
you're going to get negative 8 times negative 8, which is 64. You're going to take, again, working this through right here, uh, you're going to take 4 times negative 18, uh, which what's that going to be? 18 times 4 turned out to be, that's negative 72. And then the last one, you're going to get 1 times, whoops, what am I doing right there? Sorry. Uh, and then you're going to add in a 0. Great. So that's the entry right there. I should mention uh, before we before we go too far into this, 64 take away 72 is, of course, negative 8. The next calculation we look like, we're going to take a the first row times the second column right here. Uh, that's going to give us a negative 32 uh, plus 36 plus 0 again. Um, and notice, of course, that let me let me erase that. Whoops. Negative 32 plus 36 plus 0. Uh, then thir negative 32 plus 6 is, of course, a 4. And if we do this one more time, you're going to get this one, the first row of this column right here. In which case, what does that look like? Kind of squeeze it in right there. You're going to get negative 8 plus 8 uh, plus 1 that time. The 8's cancel and you're left with a 1. So what you can see so far, I'm going to do some dot, dot, dots. I'll let you finish this calculation on your own here. Um, it's a good it's a good thing to kind of try to convince yourself of it without me having to show it to you necessarily. But we can see that we've now reproduced the first row. And if we keep on going, we're going to produce the exact same matrix. This matrix is, in fact, an idempotent matrix. I'm going to erase some of what's going on here. So we can finish this calculation and see that the matrix is, in fact, idempotent. Great. Well, what's the, what's the next thing? What, what type of projection is this? So this is supposed to be projection onto some space. All right, this is going to be a projection onto what space are we talking about? Well, we take the span of the column vectors, which when you look at the first two, you can see that the first column is just negative two times the second column. So if I'm looking for a basis here, it turns out I don't even need the first column. You can take the span of the vectors 4, 9, 0, and 1, 2, 1. So this idempotent matrix projects onto that plane, which if you prefer, this is the plane given by the equation 9x minus 4y minus z equals 0.